back and today we are going to talk about digital paper aspect ratios or digital paper sizing, digital print sizing for your digital products for people to print out on their own for sale on Etsy or whatever other platform you may sell on. Um, this is a question I get asked quite often and that I see asked quite often in the design world when people are first starting out. So I thought I'd make a quick video to show you this handy dandy guide I've created. But first, if you have not already, or if this is your first time here, please go ahead and click on like and subscribe down below. That keeps me motivated to continue making these videos. And if you haven't already, um, go ahead and click on the link in the description for my Facebook group and join that. I am trying to create a community of like-minded individuals who are looking to grow their passive income. Um, and if you know anything about my journey, I do this part-time as a full-time working single mom. I'm an engineer. This is just a hobby for me. And I bring in a decent amount of income for my part-time effort, which you can easily duplicate because I can't draw worth a dang. But give me a computer and I am good to go in that type of creation, especially when it comes to um, SVGs and things of that nature. Anyways, to the meat of this video, we're going to talk about sizing. A lot of people get overwhelmed. They go through different Etsy stores to see kind of what looks good and what doesn't look good and, um, you know, how they should be creating their files. And people think that they have to create each one of these sizes. But fun fact, you do not have to do that. Um, Really, the size that you need to be focused on is the largest common size. Now, I have spent a few hours of research on this going through the typical printing places like Vista Print, Staples, Office Depot, um, you know, all, all of those different places that provide printing services for people, even CVS and Walgreens and your common pharmacies that have printing capabilities where people can print things out to frame in their homes, including posters and wall art, because not everybody wants to use their printer ink. They're willing to buy a file for, you know, a few bucks and then go pay another few bucks to print it out. You can have something really beautiful to hang on your wall for, you know, 30 or 40 bucks instead of hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And it's very unique. So this is a great field to get into. If you're looking for a passive income stream, um, you can see here there are uh, five different ratios, although 11 by 14 is kind of on its own. It is a very common size. Um, and then, of course, you have your one-to-one, -one, which is a square, and not as common as the rectangular sizes. So I often tell people, unless you are specifically creating something that can be utilized in a square design, just kind of stick with these rectangular ones. So in all reality, when you're designing your work, you're really only going to be providing one, two, three, four different print sizes at 24 by 36, 18 by 24, 16 by 20, and 11 by 14. Now, if you want to take it a step further, I have added in a second page here, and this is for the ISO sizes. And this is mainly used over the pond. I'm located in the United States, so this is usually for our um, overseas or international um, customers. So if you want to reach that base, I do recommend providing the isometric sizes, and they go from um, alpha zero all the way down to alpha six. And alpha zero is the largest size, as you can see, with the size in centimeters, and then the DPI is in pixels. And basically, you will take, you can take the alpha zero, which is 100%, and you can decrease it in size by a percentage to get to the smaller uh, print sizes and I see a lot of shops will provide the alpha 3 or alpha 4 and you can kind of scale down from there So you can provide the alpha 3 and explain to them that they can scale down to the alpha 6 if they so desire keep in mind um, a4 is the most common print size used um, from what I have gathered so that is the second page on this sheet, and you can download this off of my website. I do have it for free, um, and I will include that link down below in the video description for you to go check out. There are some other infographics on my website as well, as well as digital products that you may be interested in. Um, my blog is also on there as well with different uh, 
items to cover your your design digital design passive income journey so anyways what you want to do is you want to create the largest size and then provide that information in your listing to explain to the seller that they can then resize that down to any size that they so wish okay and most places if you're using a printing service you provide them a larger file size and you tell them hey i want an 8 by 12 they're not going to have any issues printing that the beautiful part of that is, is if you start at a 24 by 36 at 300 DPI and you're decreasing your size, the print quality is actually going to go up. You can't go backwards. So if you start at like an 8 by 12 and you try to scale up, you're going to get a very pixelated and grainy picture and your customer is not going to be pleased. Okay, so start with big, then explain they can decrease to small. Okay, now when... Um, and I'm just going to show you this in Silhouette Studio because that's what I have open. But you want to just kind of create basic files or artboards, as I like to call them, in whatever program you use with your basic size ratios at the biggest size. That way you can open up your, say you want to do a 2 to 3 ratio, you can open up your 24 by 36 design in there. And then you're done. You save it one time into your JPEG format or your PDF format, which are the two common formats that I see at 300 DPI, and you're ready to rock. Um, the nice thing about creating the other artboards, too, is that you have the 24 by 36 here, and all I did was superimpose a SVG that I have on here. You can go ahead and open up another artboard, which I have in here, um, and we'll just go to the 18 by 24 and open that one up and you can see that it is going to very slowly open up the 18 by 24 artboard. I can go back here to the 24 by 36. I can copy this SVG, paste it into the 18 by 24. And then I can decrease the size. Until I fit. This format okay so this design might not be the greatest there's a lot of white space here you can always add a background if you so wish um, and then you can export from there and you can do that with the other sizes as well and then you have two sizes and that took me what okay all of 30 seconds so if you save these artboards in whatever program you're using um, and then design from one and transfer to another and resize make sure you're keeping your aspect ratio ratio so you're not losing quality um, then it's very seamless so then when you're done you save all of your your biggest file the ratios okay and then you're going to zip those into a folder and upload them onto your Etsy website or whatever platform you're selling on now when I was going through this video um, I actually stumbled upon this girl shop um, and she does sell digital prints and photog photography wall art she's out of Canada s4 stars by sissy and she has over 8,000 sales. I really liked the way that she set her listings up. And I went through tons and tons and tons of listings. Um, and she actually emailed me today and was like, hey, you didn't download your product. And that's because I just wanted to show everything, um, you know, uh, so you guys can see kind of how it's done. And you can see she just has like a ton of really cool stuff in here that would look phenomenal printed out and framed like I was just blown away um, and and when I buy my house I'm definitely going to come back and check out her stuff and she has really good reviews um, and you can see some of her stuff um, that's actually been physically printed out based off of the reviews and I mean it's just it's it's just totally gorgeous stuff and, and you can find a lot of shops like this okay she does great work I'm going to include the link to her shop below so if you um make a note of it and I haven't favorited her shop yet, but I just did just go by and, 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 and give her a favorite, please give her some love and let's support our, uh, our local and fellow business owners who are trying to make a buck. And this is one that I bought. I thought it was very simple and, um, just something that I would love to put up in, um, my bedroom or the kitchen or the living room even. Um, as a set so if you look in her description and you click learn more about this item you can see that it includes four JPEGs okay and it is printable in an array of sizes and you can see how she describes everything one JPEG 
and here's the file name, and here's the aspect ratio, two by three. And it's suitable for printing in all of these sizes. Same thing with 18 by 24, you can print in all these sizes. Now, one thing that you can do if you're creating multiple designs is just copy and paste what your description is going to be and just include this in every time, right? Um, the only thing I would recommend is, and, and the only thing that I would change is do not just name your file 16 by 20 or 18 by 24. Have some sort of designator. So if it's a dog, be like 16 by 20 dog with blue balloon, you know, or something like that, or pug set or you know, something along those lines, because if you don't do that, then people and, and people buy multiple files, then they'll just have a bunch of files named 16 by 20, and they won't know what they look like until they open them or enlarge their icons. Some people can't do that. So, um, and again, um, she has alpha one all the way down to, to alpha five. So she started at alpha one, which is totally fine to do. Um, so again, the files are large, you can easily print in smaller sizes, and all of them are in high resolution 300 dpi, which ensures that you will receive a high quality print. Okay. And um, they also put in there that they can provide custom sizes. So if somebody wants a size that they don't see here or a ratio that they don't see here, um, they can contact you and you can create a, um, a different um, size for them, right? So if I go into my purchases and I download these files, you can see um, that each one is in a different file here. You can click on download and it's going to take a minute because these file files are large. Keep in mind that um, the larger the file, the larger space it is going to take up. I do recommend zipping if you can, and you're not going to exceed the uh, 20 meg limit. So in this case, let's see, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. She could have zipped it in one. It would just have created a larger download time. I'm going to go ahead and open this up on my computer. And if it will ever load. You can see the quality without having to zoom in. But if you zoom in, you can see how crisp all these lines are. Now, if she would have had a smaller print size, I guarantee you that these lines would not be crisp. I mean, these things are crisp, right? So you want to make sure when you are designing, if you zoom into the 100% um, that you... And you can see is the view actual size. This is what it would look like printed out. Okay. It's phenom quality. You want to make sure that it looks good on the computer screen. Okay. Because if it looks good on the computer screen, it's going to look good in print. Um, so I just wanted to show you that. Again, um, check her shop out. I'm going to put that in the link below. And that's really all there is to it. We'll keep it simple. Here are your ratios. Design in your largest size save to the file type that you want to in 300 dpi okay you can do this in inches you can do this in centimeters and you can do this in pixels whatever floats your boat and then upload those to your etsy shop if you're working with rectangles stick with rectangles and these uh four right here if you're working in squares easy peasy you only got one to focus on or you could provide the square and then resize to the rectangles if you so wish. That's just a little bit more difficult to do. Um, really, the choice is yours, and that's the beauty about it. Just make sure when you're doing this, again, you go back to um, these descriptions and make sure that you're using something very similar. Do not rip her off, obviously, but very similar to uh, what she has provided so that the customers know what they're purchasing and that way, there's really no arguments when it comes to that. That's all I have on digital print aspect ratios. I hope that you guys got something from this video. If you made it this far, please go ahead and click on like and subscribe below. Again, I would love to answer any questions you may have or post some additional videos that may help you in your digital design journey. If there are questions you may have, you can go ahead and join my Facebook group as well. 
where I will post um, the most recent videos as well as answer any questions you have there. And I am working on growing that community for all of you lovely people. If there's anything additional you would like to see, go ahead and drop a comment in the community tab on my YouTube channel and I'll be more than happy to answer that as well. Other than that, like I said, that's all I have to go through tonight. So I hope everybody has a great night and I will catch you on the flip.